Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is why would an air conditioning system that runs with R22 or R410A have low pressure? Okay, so low that the evaporator coil is actually freezing. So in the case of R22, if we looked at 55 psig at 29 degrees, uh, or maybe 100 psig with R410A at maybe 31 degrees, coupled with low superheat, what does that actually mean? All right. So just for instance, we're going to start with R22. Just to give you a rundown of what's happening here, this is an indicator of what's happening at the evaporator coil during cooling mode. The pressure is on the outer ring. The saturated temperature is the inner ring. Light green is R22. Uh, light rose or pink is R410A. The high side gauge, which is also referred to as the head discharge liquid line, this is giving you an indication of what's happening at the outdoor unit, at the condenser coil. So let's go ahead and start with R22, and then we'll do an example with R410A. So if we had 55 PSIG, we brought it in to about 29 degrees, R22, saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil, but we only had an actual temperature on the vapor line of, say, 32 degrees or maybe 33 degrees, 33 degrees minus... 29 degrees only gives you 4 degrees of superheat. So we know that the evaporator coil pressure is too low. And most of the time we take a look at that and we say, okay, well, we're low on refrigerant. But what's happening here is that you have a low superheat as well. When you have a low superheat, that typically means that you're overcharged, at least in the case of a piston. Typically when you have a low superheat, though, of 3 or maybe 4 degrees or maybe, you know, almost no degrees of superheat, you have the possibility of having some liquid flood back going to the compressor, and that's not a good thing. So if you had a piston, a fixed orifice, and you had too low of a superheat, then that means you need to pull out refrigerant typically. But if you pulled out refrigerant when it's 55 PSIG, all it's going to do is it's going to lower uh, less than that. Okay, So then you're going to have a lower pressure, and which therefore you're going to have a lower saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil. Remember that a saturated temperature such as this exists in the middle of the evaporator coil while the system is running. So what else could it be? Are you low on refrigerant charge? If it was a TXV system, then that means that the TXV is must be open wide open and for some reason the evaporator coil is not being able to absorb the refrigerant from the conditioned air that's inside the building. So most of the time when you have a low pressure, a freezing evaporator coil, and low superheat, a lot of times that's an airflow problem. Unless you have, say, a TXV, you know, like this, that is maybe size too large for the system that you have, which means it's going to end up opening up and letting too much refrigerant into the evaporator coil. Same thing with a piston. The piston could be oversized too much and it's letting just too much refrigerant into that evaporator coil. And therefore, it doesn't have a chance to really have a decent amount of superheat. The TXV bulb, though, if it was oversized, your pressures would be going back and forth and kind of back and forth because this bulb applies pressure to the TXV head to be able to allow more refrigerant or less refrigerant. And if, it, if this TXV sees a low superheat condition, then what it typically does is it meters down uh, the amount of flow going to the evaporator coil. But if that TXV was way oversized, then it might not be able to meter down quite enough. So let's think about this for a second. So if you have, say, 4 degrees of superheat, say you had 55 PSIG, which then you had 29 degrees in the middle of the evaporator coil, which you ended up reading at the suction line at the outdoor unit, 29 degrees at the middle of the evaporator coil, and your actual temperature on the vapor line was, say, 32 degrees, then that means you have 3 degrees of superheat, and that is too low. Likewise, if you had, say, 100 PSIG for R410A, which come down to pink inner ring, 31 degrees in the middle of the evaporator coil, but you only had, say, 33 degrees on the vapor line out at the outdoor unit, then that means that you only have 2 degrees of superheat. So we know in the case of low pressure that we should not add refrigerant if the superheat is too low. 
That means that your evaporator coil is having a problem being able to transfer the heat energy from the indoor conditioned air to the refrigerant. Therefore, you have an air blockage possibly. So a couple things that the air blockage could be. It could be that you have dust on the return side of the evaporator coil. You could have too low of a blower speed. Maybe the blower motor is sized too small. Maybe, you know, maybe the horsepower is sized too small. Maybe the dip switches aren't set in the unit if it's, say, an ECM motor. Maybe your filter's clogged. Maybe the ductwork is undersized, either on the return or on the supply. Maybe you have a duct restriction. Maybe it's collapsing in on itself. Maybe it's the acoustical liner, maybe possibly on the inside is coming apart. Maybe a piece of duct liner has made it to the bottom of the evaporator cool and is clogging it up. One time I found, you know, a Wawa bag on the bottom of the evaporator cool. And that's just due to, who knows, you know, somebody didn't have a filter sometime and <laughs> a Wawa bag got sucked through the return, which is crazy. Uh, but uh, silly stuff like this happens. Maybe the return is just too long and there's just too much friction to try to overcome ductwork. Now, so there's some type of airflow problem that's happening at the evaporator coil. You're just not able to absorb enough heat to end up boiling the refrigerant. So you should always check your pressure and then also your superheat to be able to determine should I look airflow wise or should I look maybe restriction in the, in the liquid line wise or is it just low on refrigerant i hope that cleared some things up hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at ac service tech channel